All right, so hopefully as we wrap up this Linux 101 series, uh, we can just look at a few more small things that uh, that you would probably find useful while you're building Android. One of the first of those is uh, while we looked at the graphical user interface and how we could utilize that to see things like the file space that's available and the how much resources we're using um, like how much RAM is being used while we're building Android there's lots of GUI tools available for that and we cover that in the first video of this series but I want to look at a few of the command line tools that will help us to do that the first is DF disk free right and if we give it an H for human readable we can now see the file system the size that it is, how much of it is used, and how much is available, and the percent of use, and where it's mounted. So, for instance, my home folder, which has got all of my stuff, essentially, uh, is 1.8 terabytes in size, and it is uh, currently used 623 gigs, and so there's 1.1 terabytes free, so it's 36% full, and it is uh, mounted at home and so um, and this is the actual device itself device SDB1 so what we see here is uh, my home folder with all of my stuff in it is 36 percent full so DF-H really important when you want to know uh, how much space has been used up um, very important when you're building Android because it takes a lot of space to build Android Another really important tool is uh, free. And so free, and we can say dash uh, G, right, for in gigabytes, or M for in megabytes. And so this is looking at uh, how much RAM is being used, so memory that is being used. So we have memory, we have a total of 16 gigs, uh, six and a half gigs are being used right now. Um, and then you can see a few other variables as well. Um, swap is how much swap space is available, how much is being used, and of course how much is um, still available to be used. Uh, so you may be curious, like, what is swap? And what is what is that? Well, in Windows, if you're familiar with Windows, it has a paging file. And so when you open up a bunch of programs, you can't keep all of it uh, in RAM all at the same time, usually. And so to allow you to keep something open but not have it in RAM, in Windows it'll put it into a paging file. It's just a file on the hard drive where it puts, writes down essentially the stuff that was in RAM that's not being used at the very second. It writes it down somewhere, and then you can go back uh, and keep using it. So for instance, if I open up Arena, this chess app, um, maybe, let's try that again. There we go. So if I open up Arena, right, and I uh, check now, um, it really actually didn't take very much RAM for that. Uh, it went up from 6655 megabytes to 6703 megabytes. Um, didn't didn't really take up all that much. But uh, if opening this caused the Word document that I also had open to uh, exceed the amount of memory available, then it would write it down in the swap folder or the swap file or in this case it's a swap drive and it writes it down there from the RAM and says okay I need the RAM that I'm using right now to run this uh, chess application so I'm going to take all the stuff in our word process document I'm going to put it into the swap file write it down over there and then I'll dump that out of RAM so I can keep using the RAM to do this and then when you click on the word process document it's like okay well now he's clicking on the word process document so I've got to bring all of that out of swap into RAM so I'm going to dump all this chess stuff into the swap so then I can bring this word document stuff to the forefront in memory in RAM itself uh, very similar to a paging file like you would find on Windows um, 
essentially that's the very basics of how swap works. There's a lot more to it. It can be very complicated, but I just want to stick with the basics of how it works. And so um, free dash, and then your choice of, uh, you can say free dash um, K for kilobytes, for M for megabytes, G for gigabytes, uh, and it just tells you how many, how much RAM and swap is available, which gives you a good idea of your resources um, that you're using when you're building something like Android. Um, before I close this, another really great tool that you have is called uh, Top. And what TOP does is it's a really great way to look at your resources. TOP is telling you the processes in the order of the most CPU being used. So that's why it's called TOP, because the highest percentage of CPU use goes to the top of this list. And this list just constantly updates. And it says right now uh, that the simple screen recorder that I'm using to record this is the top process that's running and it's running 45% of my CPU usage and it's using 1.5% of my total available memory and then I also have uh, Xorg which is the graphical user interface desktop uh, essentially that not the desktop itself but the program that's going to display that on the screen the chromium browser I have open in another screen the Pulse Audio that's running the audio to help do things like this recording, the virtual box that's actually running and compiling Android over there somewhere else. Uh, we have the the um, more panels, Chromium browser, different tabs and things open in them. Notice that the uh, the chess app that we have here is not even listed because it's not really using any process. Maybe if I close it it might show up for a second or perhaps if I open it there it was for just a second arena showed up for a second being in the top process uh, one of the things I can do is I can actually make this always on the top so then we can watch it a little better arena x86 went right to the top uh, for a second there as it opened up the program. So uh, top is very useful uh, if you just are wondering what's going on in the background while Android is building you can open up another terminal run top and you'll see all the different little processes that are running and how much CPU and memory they're taking to get the job done. If uh, There's a lot of commands you can use in top but the big one is Q for quit when you're done um, and that just that just ends the the process of top updating right there. Uh, one other thing is uh, um, PS right now is the processes that are running. It's looking at the ones that are running from this terminal. If I say PSAUX, it's going to show all the processes that are running on the computer. And all of these processes and what their ID number is and who's running them, like root is running this one and syslog is running this one and uh, and what process ID number they are, how much CPU they're using at this moment, memory, etc., etc. When were they started, what time, uh, and uh, what the command was that actually started this uh, process. So very useful if you're looking for something in specific. So hopefully this gives you a couple of tools that you can use from the command line. You're not going to be using these a whole lot while you're building Android, but I did just want you to be aware of them and what they are, what they do, and how you could possibly use them to get a little more information while you are uh, trying to build Android. So hopefully this was helpful, and uh, we look forward to uh, more videos on building Android.